Hello, this is Beth with The Interior Life. Today I'm going to teach you how to create beautiful, realistic design or mood boards just like this in PowerPoint. I like using PowerPoint because it's free and it has a lot of useful tools that will save you time and money when designing your space. Now I use a Mac, so be aware that some commands and mouse clicks that I use may be different if you are working on a PC. Be sure to watch to the end for some additional tips for tricky situations. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is open up a blank presentation in PowerPoint, and I'm going to go ahead and delete all of this off. Okay, so this is going to be our design board. I'm going to start with I'm going to start with designing a living room, and I'm just going to go to West Elm and pick a sectional that I like to start my design. Okay, let's start with a couch. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to find an image that doesn't have anything behind it. If you happen to find an image that has other things behind it, that's totally fine. Uh, this will work for now. So on websites like Quest Elm, what I would normally do is um, hit the right key and try to copy the image. However, you can see here, there's not an option to copy the image. But if I click on the image itself, then it's going to give me an option to do copy image. So I'm going to copy that image. I'm going to go back to my board and paste that. Now, it's got a background in here which I want to remove. So I'm going to double click my image. Come up here to remove background. And it's going to open up a box. So you can see here some of this is grayed out, but I actually want to keep that. So I'm going to go up here to mark areas to keep. So I'm just going to draw on the image here. You don't have to be super precise with it. It kind of picks out the colors. But now I've got this floor down here that I don't want to see in my design. So I'm just going to go to remove areas and draw a red line there. And it might take a couple passes, but we'll just remove all of that underneath. And there we go. And then I'm going to click off the image and I've got my sofa saved um, without any background. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and crop this. I'm going to um, crop the box down. I'll show you why later. Once you get so many things on your design boards, it gets difficult to click on different items because all of the boxes are so big. So here we go. I've got my sofa and I'm pretty happy with that. And now I want to look for, I'm going to find some chairs. So I'm going to go with um, sculptural chairs. And again, I'm just making up a design and trying to find something I like. Uh, so let's see, these from Crate and Barrel are pretty cool. So I'm going to click on Crate and Barrel. And what color do we like? I am kind of digging this rust color. It's a little different, huh? So I want my chairs on either side of my sofa facing each other. So I'm going to go down here and pick an image of my chairs kind of looking in. So I've got the image here and I'm going to copy the image. And then I'm going to paste it, right click and paste it on to my design. And I'm going to go ahead and remove that background again. So that one worked out perfectly and then click off the image and I'm going to kind of shrink it down to scale here. Now I like this chair, but I want the other one facing the other way. So what I'm going to do is right click on this image. I'm going to copy it. Then I'm going to paste it. So now I have two Then I'm going to double click and go up here to rotate and I'm going to flip it horizontally. So now I've got two chairs facing in a nice little conversation area. So we've got um, the rust and the gray. So now we need to pick out a rug. So I want a modern 
rust rug because I want to pick up some of those rust colors. So let's see. This guy's pretty cool. What do y'all think? So we'll go with this one. Now I want to show you something real quick just in case you have issues getting those images. So here, if I right click, I can copy the image, but let's say for some reason, it's not giving me that option. Some have, um, some have protection on there, so you can't do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna just clip it. So if you're on a PC, that would be your snipping tool on a Mac, it's Shift Command 4, and it's gonna bring up my little bullseye. You just push all three of those together. And then I'm just going to copy my rug and it's going to bring it over here. So now I've got my rug and I can just drag that into my design and I'm going to flip it. Now I want this to kind of fit all the furniture on. So I'm going to make it bigger and then I'm going to grab this little handle up here and drag it down. So it looks more like everything is actually sitting on the rug. So of course now this is on top of all of my furniture. I want, I want to move it back. So I'm going to click on my rug and right click on it. And then I'm going to send it to the back. So now my rug is in the back of my design. But let's say I want to see what that rug looks like with the tone of my floors. <clears throat> so maybe I've got um, light wood floors. So let's say this is the color of my floors. So again, this is one of those images that just won't let me, won't let me take it from the web. So again, I'm going to push shift command four together and I'm just going to take a grab of that. And then I'm going to bring it over here and drag it into my design. I'm going to turn it this way to have the, the floor grains going the right way and then I'm going to drag it out so it looks like it's taking up the whole screen now I'm gonna right click on that and send it to the back so now my floor is behind everything so let's say I have some white floor molding trim so I'll do white baseboards so here's um, just an image that I can use to represent my baseboards. So I'm going to copy the image and go back and paste it. So obviously my floorboards aren't that big, so I'm just going to drag it down to size. And then I'm going to grab this little handle here and drag it out. And I'm actually going to drag it out a bit further because once I start shrinking it down my option to crop it gets a little difficult so there we go so now I've got a little baseboard and now I'm going to double click on that and go to crop it and just bring that in so there we go now I'm going to send this to the back put it behind everything I'm going to send my floor to the back again because now my baseboard is behind my floor. And there we go. Now I've got my baseboard. Extend that out a little. So now I want to pick a paint color. Let's see. So I'm going to go with um, Sherwin Williams First Star. Let's see what that looks like. So the great thing about like websites like Sample Eyes is I can just copy and paste their samples. Oh, this says calm. Let's see. You know what? Let's go with this. I like this. So we're gonna use Sherwin we or Benjamin Moore Calm. So I'm gonna do Shift Command 4 all together again, and I'm just gonna grab this color. And then I'm going to drag it again onto my screen. So I'm going to bring this over here, extend it out. And then I'm going to send it to the back. 
here we go. So now I can see what all of my elements look like together. But let's say we want to maybe add some pillows and a coffee table. So let's go with modern coffee table. Oh, this guy's kind of cool. What do we think? Let's see. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's even cooler. All right, so I'm going to go with this one. And let's see if I can. Oops. Do a screen grab there. So I'm going to copy the image. And I'm going to put this in. Now I'm going to click to remove the background on that. So I've double clicked it and it brings up the remove background. And there we go. That one perfectly removed. So I'm going to actually I'm going to crop this. And I'm going to bring it down to scale. Just grab that little handle there. So now I have my coffee table. There we go. Now I want to show you something else. So let's say you're playing around and you're working on your design and you're like, oh my gosh, where did I find that, that coffee table? So what you can do is um, you can actually um, copy your links here. And then you can actually add notes beneath here. So you just grab that and drag it up. So now I can paste that link there. So now I know that my coffee table came from Williams Sonoma. So there we go. Now let's say there's um, a window behind my sofa. So I'm going to go with black framed window and find an image of that. So it's actually, these are mirrors. That's okay though. We can always click on images and take an image as well. So like here's, here's an image of a, a window that might work or even this one. So this is an eye stock image. So I like the way this one looks. So I'm gonna copy this one and paste it. Now, obviously I don't need all four of these. So first thing I'm gonna do is crop all of these down to get rid of all of the extra ones. There we go. Just bring that on in. Come on. My mouse caught up a little. Okay. So now I've got a window, but I've got a long window. So I'm going to drag it out a little bit and it's a little squattier than that. So So now I'm going to go ahead and send this window to the back. So now, of course, it's gone. So I'm going to send my paint to the back again. So it's just all about the layers. We're just keeping everything layered. Let's make that a little smaller. So now let's see, I want to add some draperies to that. So I'm going to do, I'm just going to do white panel drapes. Just keep it simple. So what I like to do with draperies is to try to find something similar that is on the color rod that I like already so I don't have to add in rods and everything like that. So here's a good example of a white drapery <clears throat> with a black rod. That's what I want to use a black rod. So I'm going to copy this image. I'm going to add this in. And now I am going to remove the background mark areas to keep and what I'm going to do is just highlight all of this. I'm going to get the sides let's see sometimes white images are the hardest because they compete with the background so I'm going to remove these doors out
Let's get the bottom there. Now I've got a little bit that got taken away. There, so now I've got some draperies. Whoops, I can still see my little door over here. So I'm gonna remove the background and remove this door. There we go. Okay, so I am going to try to size this. It may not work with the gap. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and crop this. and move over here. I'm gonna make this a little bit shorter because I don't want my curtains all the way down there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. Oops. And paste, oops, it hit special paste. So I'm just gonna cancel that, copy and paste. And I'm gonna go ahead and double click on that to bring up the rotate and flip horizontal. Now you can see here that um, I'm missing some curtain rod there in the middle. So you can actually hit shift command four together again. And I am just going to copy that little rod and drag it back in. And I'm going to make it bigger so I can drag it out. And I'm just going to shrink it down to fit into that size, make it the same size as the others. Here we go. And just plop that right on top. So now I've got a continuous rod. Let's try to make that a little bit more even. I'm going to bring this one to the front because I've got that little gap there. Now it's covered. Okay, so now I want to go ahead and bring everything else forward again because now my drapes are behind my couch. So I'm going to click on my couch. I'm going to bring it to the front. I'm going to bring my coffee table back to the front so it's in front of the couch. I'm going to bring my chairs back to the front. And there we go. So let's dress this up a little bit. Let's look for modern black and white art. So these are kind of cool from West Elm. Oh, I like these even better. So let's go with these from Pottery Barn. So what I'm going to do with this, since I want to take these two images separately, is I'm going to do the shift command four and grab screenshots of them because I want to put them on opposite sides of my windows. So shift command four again. So now I have both of them. So I'm going to drag this one over. Scale it down to fit. So now I've got art there. Let's see, which one did I take? And then we're bringing this one and scale it down. Now, a great way to see if you're making them the same size is, of course, you just put them side by side and it'll those little red arrows will pop up and show you where they are. Also, you can see the guidelines here so I can see that I'm actually putting them at the same height. So now I've got some art. And now let's do modern black and white throw pillows. I'm gonna go with these because I think they kind of tie in with the paintings. So let's go to see full details. So I'm gonna copy this image Whoops, 
Don't know why that brought up my curtain panel again. Copy image. There we go. So I'm gonna double click on this and remove the background. Mark areas to keep. So I only want this front pillow. I don't want both pillows. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out this front pillow first. And then I'm gonna go through here and do mark areas to remove. And I'm just gonna kind of follow this along. I hope it picks up on that. that piping and then I can see here this little black area is still there okay so now I've got my pillow I'm going to shrink that down put it on my couch here so I always like to take the pillows grab this little um, rotate handle here and kind of rotate it to the side so they look like they're kind of leaning on the couch so I'm going to copy and paste that one and bring it over here and rotate that one. Just kind of line it up there on the couch. So now I want to do um, maybe some potted greenery. Find something that looks cool and modern here. Since I've got a black table, I think I want to do more of a white pot. So let's do greenery in white pot. Let's look at images and see what we have. Let's see. I don't really like any of these. Hmm. All right, let's go with this moss balls. That'll do. That will do. So I'm going to copy this image, of course, and put it on there. Remove my background and mark my areas to keep. So again, whites on a white background are just a pain sometimes, but there we go. Let me see if I can make this look a little cleaner. Okay. So now I have that on my coffee table. Let's say I want to add some decor books. So I'm going to do stacked decor books. Let's see. Let's go with these because we've got some white in there to stand out against the black coffee table. So just copy that image. Paste. I'm just going to crop in here. And then I'm going to remove those, the white background on there. Come on. Okay. So I'm going to scale that down. And let's go with a gold sculptural object. <clears throat> so I like this little knot. Let's 
Let's see if it's going to let me grab it. Copy image. Oops. So we're going to just remove this background out, move out these other books. I'm going to shrink this down and place it on top of my books. So what else do we need? We need some end tables. So I've got a black coffee table. I think I might want to go for either gold or natural wood end tables. So let's see. So this guy's kind of cool. So I'm going to go ahead and show you something because I actually just recently used this coffee table in a design. So we can see here the price is $410 and I know it's cheaper elsewhere. So I'm going to show you how to find things um, to find out if it's the same item cheaper elsewhere. So I'm going to do shift command four. And I'm going to copy this image. Then I'm going to go to Google. Yeah. Okay. Now I've got this little search by image icon here. So I'm going to click on that and then I can drag this into that box and it's going to show me everywhere that I can find this coffee table. So it was $410 on all modern, but um, at Polly and Bark, it's $299. So let's go ahead and do the Polly and Bark one. So you can see it's got some cool shelves and everything. So anyways, that's a, that's a little trick to kind of help with saving some money on your project. So let's add these in. So I'm going to mark my areas to keep. Almost there. There we go. So I'm going to kind of move this out a little bit so I can bring my coffee table in or my end table in. I'm going to copy and paste that. Bring one over here. Bring my chair out. So now my chairs are down here. Let's see. Let's make those the same height. So now I'm going to just bring my chairs in front again. So bring to front. I like setting up a design to where it actually looks like you're looking at the room and not just a bunch of things sort of scattered all over the board. I think this really kind of helps give the visualization of what everything looks like when it comes together instead of just a bunch of little pictures all over the boards. So now you can see it actually set up like a living room. So let's do some lamps. So we've got gold modern lamps. Oh, these are fun. Oh, I don't know which ones I like better. Do I like these or do I like these? Hmm. I'm going to go with these. Okay. Copy that image. Paste. Let's remove the background. So you can see everything is just about building your layers. You have to look at it as, you know, things sitting on top of one another, really just laying your pictures on top of each other. It's a lot like Photoshop, but much simpler to use. So now I have this lamp. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to make a matching one over here. Now we probably need a chandelier. So let's do gold modern 
chandelier for living room. Hmm. Well, this is fun. So I know for a fact that build.com does not let you take their images. So shift command four, snip it out. Let's bring this over, remove background. And let's keep that little area. Maybe we want to make that a little bigger. There we go. So there you have it. It's a very basic living room, just simple and easy to do. We did that, I think, in about 10 minutes. So we've got a whole living room layout there the bedroom because there's some things that whenever I work on bedrooms that are a little bit more um, difficult and that pertains to bedding so I've already set up a slide here and if you're wondering how I did that I just went up here to new slide and click this little arrow and added a blank slide like this okay so I've already gotten our bedroom mostly set up um, everything on here is from Serena and Lily in case you're wondering I just did it to keep it easy and consistent in case you had any questions and also we're going to do a bit more of a coastal look for for this bedroom so first of all um, we've got our rug nightstands lamps the flooring I just copied and pasted from the slide before as well as the um, molding there at the bottom so let's take a look at this. So I am going to do, uh, let's see, where did it go? I'm gonna do this bed from Wayfair and I'll show you why I'm giving you this example and how to make it easier to put bedding on a bed like this. So you, as you can see, this bed has a large footboard and when you put bedding on top of it, you don't see the footboard anymore. Why is that not? Copy, copy image, okay. And I'm gonna paste it here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove this background. Mark my areas to keep. And I'm gonna go ahead and kind of remove these pillows out of the way so they're not sticking out when I put my bedding on. There we go. Okay. So now I have my bed and I'm going to add some bedding in. So I'm going to go back over here to Serena and Lily and I'm going to pick this bedding. Now the issue with bedding is that a lot of times you'll find images that are cut off like this. So it's really hard to grab a full picture of the image in effort to put it on your bed, right? Uh, or it's just kind of stacked, you know, folded in, um, you know, in the image. So I like to try to find images that are like this to where I can see the bed full on. And even if it's not exactly the bedding that I want, like if you're just doing white bedding, then any picture of a white bed like this will work. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just do a screen grab of this shift command four on a Mac and I'm going to come out here and just actually I'm going to cut it off about right here kind of in the middle ish. So I'm going to bring this back over to my slide and remove the background. Mark my areas to keep and I'm just going to keep the half. And it's okay if you go over and it's not perfectly half. Okay. So now I have this bedding and as you can see, <laughs> it totally covers that beautiful footboard. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this up a little bit so you can kind of see the bedding once it's on the bed, that little, um, trim detail there so you can just kind of size it and make it into the right shape okay and then I'm going to 
copy and paste this. Double click and it's going to pull up my rotate and I'm going to flip it horizontally. So now I've got, I know we've got that weird pillow in the back, but you can see how you can add that in to make it look more finished. So, but I'm still covering my um, footboard here. So what I'm going to do is do shift command four. I'm going to copy my footboard. Just like that. There we go. And then I'm going to bring it back over and put it on top. So when I go down here and add my bedding, now I can see my beautiful footboard. Okay. So we still have the issue here with the pillows. So what I'm going to do is click on that image. I'm going to crop it and I'm going to bring it down like this and just completely erase those pillows. And there we go. We've got a beautifully made bed. Slide that over there a little bit. So I'm going to go back over here to Serena and Lily, and I'm going to add in those Euro shams again. So copy the image, paste, and let's remove our background. This is also really nice because a lot of times the images online or for a, for a complete bedding set. And maybe you don't want to use it as a complete bedding set. Maybe you want to add some more interesting pillows like I'm going to do. So now I've got my Euro there in the back. I'm going to copy and paste this a couple times to get two more. So now I have my three Euro pillows. Let's see, let's make these a little smaller and bring it up so we get that little fold over with the bedding. <clears throat> yeah, maybe a little bigger. There we go. Okay, so now I want to add some prettier pillows with that, make it a little more interesting. So I'm going to go down here and find, can you all hear that thunder? It's raining here. <laughs> so let's say I want to add something a little more interesting to that. They're, they make a cute little light blue buffalo checked pillow. I think this is it. Let's see how that looks. And I might not like the way that looks. <laughs> I think that might be a bit too country. We'll see. So if I don't like it, I can go ahead and delete it. Here that I have actually um, changed up the bedding quite a bit. I wasn't filling the other bedding with that. It just, it wasn't working. So I went and got these pillows from Pure Salt Interiors. Uh, this is just white bedding. And, and this throw blanket is just a random one from Amazon. And I found an image of it laying across a chair or a bed or something and just removed the background. And now I can tuck it in there so it looks all cute and put together. So a couple of little tricks for you um, that when you get more involved in doing your design, you might want to group things together. So every time you move something, it all stays together. So the way that you do that, let's say I love my nightstand, this lamp, and I don't want anything getting messed up. So I'm going to hold down shift, click on my nightstand, click on my lamp. I'm going to right click on my mouse and I'm going to go to group and I'm going to group those together. So now it moves as a whole. Okay. There we go. Let me make that even with the other one. So if I want to ungroup it, I just, again, right click on that, go to group and go to ungroup. And now everything is separate again. 
So let's talk about this back wall here. Uh, maybe I don't want to add a paint color. Maybe I want to add um, some board and batten. So what I've done here is I just searched up board and batten and went to images and I found this one that actually has the board and batten like a, um, you know, a, from the front. It's not at a weird angle like this one over here or anything. So this is um, a great board and batten wall. So I'm just going to um, take a snip of this like that and I'm going to bring it over here to my room and now I'm going to size this down okay bring that up a bit now I'm going to copy that and paste it and continue bringing it along here just kind of trying to line that up so it looks even Okay, so we've got some weird shadows on there and that's okay. So now I'm just going to send this to the back. I'm going to move over here and I'm going to crop this one a little bit because it's hanging over the edge. It lined up perfectly. So now I have, you know, a look of a board and batten wall. So let's say that I like this board and batten wall, but I want it to be a different color. So there in PowerPoint, there are some um, color corrections are not the greatest, but and they don't always work, to be quite honest. But in certain situations, they can help out. So I've gone over here to format picture and clicked on the picture icon up here. And let's say that I want to use some of their presets. That's normally what I do because it gives me the best results. But let's say I want to make this um, a light blue board and batten wall. So you can see how it kind of changes the color. It's not super realistic, but it does give you an idea of, of different things that you can do. So I'm going to click on that again and hit reset. But let's say that I want to make it a warmer white. I can kind of warm it up a bit like this. I can move the temperature. I can turn down the saturation, turn it back up. So maybe if I wanted more of a cream on my back wall there. So very minor changes that you can do with that. They're not perfect, but they get the job done if you have that issue. So I'm going to go down here and hit reset and leave that as white. I've finished off our little bedroom. You can see I added a few things. I absolutely love when I'm doing um, a room for somebody and they have a dog to put their dog in the picture like just to find a dog that looks like it online and um, copy and paste it and put it in there we have a beagle so i put a little beagle there um, a basket added some things to the nightstand and i shifted the whole room over to the left because i wanted to add in a little sitting area in my mind um, this on the right side here is probably a wall with some windows that you could put two nice chairs in and a little table for a drink and of course um, some greenery um, a piece of art from Etsy and a chandelier and then a little bench for the foot of the bed so that's this room completed and now I'm going to move to using your own pictures in your designs in case you want to see what something looks like or if you have something in your home already that you want to include in your design so I'm going to move to my next slide down here and this is actually uh, my master bathroom. As you can see, it's a nice bathroom. There's not really anything wrong with it. It's just a little builder looking. Um, probably the only little upgrade here is this framed mirror that they did, which is nice. But the lights are very standard, faucets, everything's pretty standard. So what I did, I went to my bathroom and I took a picture standing in front of my vanity. I cleared everything off to give it kind of a clean slate and try to get it as full on as possible and straight. So a couple things about this. Um, I've already pulled some things to speed up the process so you can see how I would do my bathroom. But let's say um, like here for the towel holders, I want to, oops, I've actually already done that. I want to replace these towel holders with something else. So what I'm going to do is cover those up simply by um, doing shift command four so I can grab a little screen pick there, right there of my wall. I'm going to drag this over 
and come over here and cover up this little towel holder. So as you can see, it's not quite the exact same color. So I'm going to go over here to uh, picture format and then um, picture corrections. And I'm going to bump up that brightness just a hair so it blends in a little bit better. So now you can see that's covered up a bit more. Uh, it's not perfect, but definitely um, covers up that uh, little towel ring a little bit. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to bring a little square over to cover up that towel holder. Let's make it a little bit bigger. And now I can cover up that towel holder. Ah, let me. There we go. Okay. So let's say I just I wanted to keep my back wall the exact same that it is. Um, I'm just going to add some mirrors. Um, in the next example, I'm going to add some wallpaper. But let's say I just wanted to take all this down and start with the clean slate. So I can do what I did over here with the um, screen grab of the wall. But let me show you it. Since my wall is textured, when I come over here and try to blow it up, to cover that back, you can see it really makes the texture look crazy. So another option that you can do is you can go over here, um, you can click on your picture and then go over here to um, fill in line under picture format. And so I'm gonna do a solid fill and I'm gonna click on here so I can pick my color. I'm gonna click my little dropper and I'm just going to grab um, this wall color right here. And then I'm going to add that in. Oop. Let's see. There we go. So as you can see, it put it on the background of my picture, which I don't want. But I can also just do Shift Command 4 again and grab that color and bring it over. And it kind of gives me a little bit better. That color is a little off, so I picked kind of a bad area. Another option, too, is just to use your paint sample um, from Sample Eyes. However, my walls are agreeable gray, and when I pulled the paint sample over, it um, because of the shadows and everything with my picture it was kind of a cloudy day it did not um, it, it just looked totally off even though that was the color that it was it just it just looked bad from the image that I grabbed from the screen okay so I've got my bathroom again and I'm gonna do um, something a little different so what I did is I picked out this wallpaper and I've just added it to a blank slide again just for time's sake to show what I think I might do in my bathroom. So I've added this nice black seagrass wallpaper. And then I've got some mirrors. I can add those over my sinks, nice little gold rimmed arch mirrors and then some lighting these little vanity lights here we go and a couple of faucets now unfortunately with faucets they always seem to show them at an angle so <laughs> It looks a little weird there, but the point is I can put everything together in my um, master bathroom and get an idea for what that looks like. Um, let's see, where did my towel holders go? I must have not copied those. There they are. So there's my towel holders. Before I start um, sort of tearing everything apart and you know not knowing what I want to buy, I can put some towel holders on there and, you know, just see what everything looks like together before I go and start um, making purchases. So I'm going to flip this towel holder so it's going the other way. And I've got some little towels. 
to put on my little towel holders. Let's flip that. There we go. And then every room needs a little bit of greenery. Some greenery. And then I've even found some hardware if I wanted to do black hardware to go along with the black. So I can just put those on all of my whoops, and all of my drawers. Now, also on something like hardware, something very small that you're trying to get in an exact place, so maybe I wanted this middle hardware here right in the center of that drawer, I can click on that and then use my arrow keys to move it just a tiny bit. Because sometimes when you're trying to move things around and get it exactly center, yeah, it gets a little difficult. So I can continue on putting my hardware on there. But as you can see, now I can envision what my bathroom would look like with this design. So I'll play around with that some more for my house. It's a future project for me. And um, But anyways, in the meantime, this kind of gives me an idea on how I want to plan out that bathroom. So now I'm going to move on to your own furnishings and how you can work that into your design as well picture um, a design for um, one of my best friends homes I'm working on her house and um, she had this green kind of sagey green leather sofa that we wanted to repurpose and use again however this was already in her house um, you know they got it at a local furniture store let's say that I went to the furniture store's website and was unable to find this exact couch but it's kind of an unusual shade so I wanted to make sure that I got the shade exactly right to um, pick the rug and things like that um, normally if I can't take a picture of a piece of furniture I'll really try to find something as similar as possible but I really like getting a picture of the furniture facing it so I'm able to use it in the design and you can see the exact piece of furniture and how it's going to look. So if you want it, this is actually just a screenshot of her design so nothing um, moves around in it. But let's say if I wanted to add um, her couch in. So all I do is just airdrop the picture to my computer uh, if you know, or you can email it to yourself however you want to do it. So in order to bring the picture in, you can go over here to insert and then pictures and then you've got this little drop down arrow so I'm going to pick a picture from the file and let's see where I have put her green couch I've got so many pictures in here so here's the picture of her green couch so I'm just going to drag and drop that in oh sorry insert so here's her couch in her house and you can see that I actually even took her floor so I could get the exact color of her floor as well so I'll treat this just like um, if I was inserting a decor item into the uh, design I'll just double click that and click remove background and then just mark my areas to keep ah there we go running a little slow today so now I have her couch and I'm going to remove that little area underneath that kind of gray shadow area. Oops, took my legs out so I can add those back in. There we go. So now I have her exact couch that I can scale down and I can use in her design. Bringing you to another design just so you can see how I've used some of these tools in order to get an idea for a you know a space that I want to make over so th this is actually in my home these are our this is our staircase and I was wanting to do uh, a tree and I couldn't decide did I want to do a tree and just have maybe some lanterns or no lanterns um, or did I want to do a smaller tree with a smaller pot and have a bench? So I've got two different angles here to just kind of see what that looks like because I wanted to be able to put the bench in at this angle. So my issue was when I added in this tree, it looked like it was just kind of plopped in front of the, <laughs> the stair uh, banister there. So 
Um, I use the tools to take a, uh, a screenshot of that. So Shift Command 4, I just made a screenshot of my banister and uh, move that over. So let me actually move this. So Shift Command 4, I did a little screenshot of my banister. Then I can put my tree back and my, my pot. And then I can just drag that banister down in there and remove the background. So the nice thing when you do something like that is it keeps it the exact same size. So um, I'm able just to move that over on there again. So again, there's my banister and I can just move it back over and I can see kind of more what that looks like with the pot back in that little uh, corner. So without having it look like it's just floating out there in space. So that's one way to do it. Another thing that I like to do is, like for me personally, I have a lot of artwork that my father has actually made that I have at my house. So this is a wall in my kitchen area, and this is actually his artwork. So I was able just to stand right in front of the, the art, take as straight of a picture as I could of it. And again, I used that insert feature and just uh, brought his artwork down and uh, remove the background. So I was wanting to do this kind of molding wall and I wanted to see what that would look like with his artwork and some uh, sconces and some ben some benches. So that's what that looks like. Same with, let's see, I was kind of doing some different designs. For my home office, I was working on some different things. So this is um, a couple of different versions of that. I actually went with this top one and that is in an upcoming video. And uh, this is his artwork as well. So this is kind of what I base my whole design off of. It's one of my favorite pieces of his. So again, I just took that picture and um, brought it down into my design, removed the background and put it in there so I could see what it looked like with the navy blue. And I'm really happy with it. So I can't wait to share the office with you uh, when I've got time to edit it. So Anyways, I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful to do things in your own homes and be a little more certain about your design choices along the way. So thanks for watching. I hope you like and subscribe. Bye-bye.